When it comes to changeable track conditions in motor racing, there's one rule. Be on the right tires at the right time. And then there's another rule for Monaco. Track position is everything. If you're like me, when you watch the 2022 Monaco Grand Prix, you are probably struggling to understand what's going on with the race strategy. How did Ferrari lose this? In this video, I'm gonna break down the strategy and pit steps of this chaotic mixed weather Grand Prix so that everybody can understand exactly what happened. Throughout the entire weekend, Ferrari dominated the streets of Monaco. Leclerc and Sainz trading lap times back and forth with Perez decently in the mix. Verstappen never really looked as confident as Perez around the circuit. Maybe there was something about the car balance or track which just played to Perez's strengths. The Ferraris qualified 1-2 with Leclerc and Sainz, while the Red Bulls lined up behind them with Perez standing third and Verstappen fourth. Since the second half of the race was merely a procession, as is typical in Monaco, I'm going to focus on the first half of the race and explain what happened between the Red Bulls and the Ferraris. In order to help demonstrate what's going on with this race, I'm going to constantly refer to two different figures. This is the first figure which I'm going to refer to. We'll call this one the race trace. In short, this graph demonstrates the gap of various drivers to the reference driver. Each dot represents a lap by that driver, and the vertical distance between these points represents their gap on the racetrack. This is measured in seconds. Because Signs only stops once in this sequence, I've used him as our reference to make things a little bit easier to understand. Points above this line are ahead of Signs, points below this line are behind him. The next graph is simply a lap time chart. This is a representation of driver's lap times on a given lap. This is another way to quickly check the pace of various drivers at any given time, without seeing how this impacts their gaps or their strategy. Well, everybody said rain will be the only way the Monaco Grand Prix is exciting. I think we got what we asked for. After the safety car pulled and the race started, Leclerc did what he did all weekend. He sails off into the distance. The circuit conditions look pretty tricky and wet, with the cars constantly power sliding out of turn 8, which was uh, pretty cool to see. Lap 3. Gasly, Stroll, and Latifi take a gamble on the intermediate tires. It looks like a bit of a struggle at first, but after the next few laps, Vettel, Schumacher, and Tsunoda join them by also fitting the intermediate tires. At this point, there's clearly a drying line starting to form in parts of Sector 1. Lap 10. Between lap 10 to 12, Fettel and Stroll are producing reasonable lap times on the intermediate tires. When the wet and intermediate tires are producing similar lap times, we call this the wet inter-crossover conditions. If the circuit is drying and no further rain is expected, the inter is the correct tire to be on at this point. You can see Fettel and Stroll catching traffic, but their clean air lap times are a match for the front runners who are still on full wet tires. Now, there's a reason why Sainz and Leclerc are not stopping for inters. At this point, none of the drivers have a pit window to the McLaren of Norris. Remember, track position is key. About this time, we hear some dialogue between Sainz and his engineer. Sainz insists they should wait and try to go straight to a dry weather tire, rather than doing a few laps on the intermediate. He can clearly see that the track is drying, but the wet tire still seems to be hanging on for him. By lap 15, Leclerc has gapped his teammate by over 5 seconds. He's showing that the Ferrari has the pace in the wet as well as the dry. On lap 16, Perez comes in for enters. Now this is a very risky stop. Looking at the race gaps, the Red Bull strategists will have seen that if Perez stops now, this will drop him right out onto Norris. But they pull the trigger anyway. Fortunately for Perez, Norris pits on this lap as well. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Checo's outlap on inters is the same pace as his flying lap on the wet tires. You can see here on the race trace, Checo's gap is not changing to the front runners. At this point, Red Bull are still monitoring Verstappen's pace and are just looking to see how Perez is getting on with his new intermediate tire. Lap 18. Now, this is where it gets very spicy and a lot of things happen pretty quickly here. Leclerc is easily 25 seconds ahead of Perez, which should be an okay but pretty close pit stop window. But then this happens. Perez's first time lap on the inters is a full 7 seconds a lap faster than Leclerc's last lap on the wets. Now, without going into too much detail, here's a telemetry example of how fast Perez was on lap 15 on old wets versus one lap old intermediate tires. Turn 3 and 4 are so much faster, he no longer needs to lift through the tunnel. By sector three on this lap, he's not just taking tenths out of Leclerc, he's taking seconds away from him. Leclerc exits the pits and comes out behind Perez. Verstappen then pits and maintains his gap behind Leclerc. Sainz is now leading the race. He's still on wets. His engineers are telling him to stop for inters, but Sainz tells the team, no, I want to wait for the dry weather tires. Perez's inters are already warmed up and he is flying ahead of Leclerc. Perez puts another three seconds into him, lap 21. Signs pits for dry weather tires and goes straight to the white sidewalled hard compound. 
Now, just as we see signs stop, we hear some commotion on Leclerc's radio. The engineer tells him to box, then to stay out, but it's too late. Leclerc is already in the pit lane. Fortunately, the mechanics are ready with the tires, and he doesn't lose too much time here. Right now, everybody is freaking out, but this isn't where Ferrari lost the race. I'll come back to this point in just a second. At this point, both Perez and Verstappen are getting some reasonable degradation on their intermediates. This might not be the right tire to be on anymore. Perez is putting in 129s on Inters, while Ricardo's first proper lap on a hard is a 128. We are now in the Inter Dry crossover. Lap 22. The Red Bulls decide to stack and pit both of their cars for hard tires. While the Red Bulls are performing their stops, Sainz encounters a bit of lap traffic, which allows Perez to come out about five seconds ahead. Max comes out just one second behind Sainz. Your current race order is Perez, Sainz, Verstappen, Leclerc. Now, this is the end of the race for Ferrari, and this is the end of the race for the front of the field. Now, let's go back over the race with a bit of hindsight and understand what happened. To be fair, some of this isn't hindsight at all. Ferrari threw the Claire's raceway when they ignored both of the rules. Be on the right tires at the right time, and track position is everything around Monaco. Looking back at the Aston Martin early race on their intermediate tires, Ferrari had enough information to understand that the intermediate tire was a good tire to be on this time, even before the Red Bulls went out and started setting rapid lap times. Even if they had stopped the next lap after Perez, they would have easily covered Perez. Yes, both the Red Bulls did very short stints on the intermediate tire, but they were on this tire when it gave them a huge pace advantage. This provided the gap they needed later, more or less giving them a free stop over signs. Ferrari didn't have the confidence to cover Red Bull, and waiting to react only cost them track position. Arguably, Sainz was the only one that saved Ferrari this weekend. Even though the wet tire might not have been the best tire for the conditions, it wasn't too far away. Now, looking at the pit stop sequence for the dry weather tires, if Sainz hadn't encountered traffic, he probably would have jumped Perez at the stop. Unfortunately, he barely kept track position over Verstappen. Now, to be fair, I don't think Ferrari should have been surprised like this. They have all the timing data, and they can see when their driver's approaching traffic. Drivers will always lose time overtaking traffic. For me, it's not clear if Sainz being proactive and telling the pit wall that he wanted to wait for the dry tires muddied their decision-making process for Leclerc, or whether they just missed the trick here in Monaco. At the end of the day, assertive calls from the Red Bull pit wall and flawless drives from Max and Checo saw them take home P1 and P3. While Carlos also had a faultless race, he just got a bit unlucky and took home P2. Now, if you like this kind of technical analysis and breakdown of races and qualifying, be sure to check out some of my other content. I've left some links here for you.